we've talked about limits but we've always talked about limits of x going to some certain number like the limit as x goes to zero or the limit as x goes to two well what happens if we take the limit as x goes to either infinity or negative infinity that is this topic right here and there are some facts to consider what happens as x goes to infinity and your numerator is expanding much faster than your denominator. We could put in some values of x to see what's happening here. Let's try 10. Well, 10 over 1 is 10. How about 100? How about 1,000? How about a million? This fraction's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and as x goes to infinity, this fraction also is going to go to infinity. So fact number one, if your numerator is, is, is expanding much faster than your denominator, then your fraction goes to infinity. Fact number two, what happens if your denominator goes to infinity, but your numerator doesn't? Well, let's put in some examples. How about 1 over 10? That's 0.1. 1 over 100 is 0.01. 1 over 1,000, 0 0.001. So it seems that we keep on adding a zero before our one every single time we multiply by 10. How about one over, a, you know, a million? It'd be five zeros and then a one. Well, let's consider this. As x goes to infinity, we're gonna have an infinite number of zeros before our one. Well, this fraction then is getting very, very, very small. So small, in fact, that it approaches zero. So, fact two, the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x, or if your denominator expands much faster than your numerator, your fraction's going to go to zero. And finally, fact three, the limit as x goes to infinity of any constant is just that constant. Think about a horizontal line, y equals c. That horizontal line stays c all the way to infinity. It's not going to move anywhere. When we talk about infinity, we're talking about this amazing vastness, this macroscopic chasm that's ever expanding. There is no end to it. It's, it is boggling to the mind how huge infinity is. It's so huge that it's bigger than huge. Our universe isn't even infinitely big. At some point, according to our current theories, it will start contracting again. Nothing that we can possibly imagine even comes close to the magnitude of infinity. And because of that, we have this idea of grains of sand. Now, if we took the limit as x approaches infinity of x plus 5, we have this x going off to infinity massively. It's expanding at such a fast rate to infinity that this 5 next to it is just a grain of sand. It gets swallowed up by the magnitude of this ever-expanding universe. Imagine a grain of sand next to the expansion of the universe. It's so insignificant that we could even say it doesn't matter. This five, in fact, gets swallowed by the magnitude of infinity next to it. It is a grain of sand. And so infinity plus five is just infinity. That's what makes these problems so much fun to do, that we are expanding so fastly, so magnificently, that everything around it is just inconsequential compared to that magnitude. Consider the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared plus x over x minus 5. Well here, x squared is expanding to infinity much, much quicker than x. Even though x is going to infinity, it's still a grain of sand compared to the magnitude of x squared that is right next to it. This x squared is increasing so much more rapidly than x that x actually gets swallowed by that expansion. Negative 5, same thing. It's a grain of sand compared to the magnitude of infinity that's right next to it. And x squared over x reduces down to x. 
and of course the limit as x approaches infinity of x over 1 from fact 1 is infinity. So in all of these problems what happens is these grains of sand can be cancelled out because they're swallowed by the magnitude of infinity next to it and what we get is we can reduce the entire function down to x over 1, 1 over x, or just some constant c. So we'll be using our three facts constantly. Here's another one. Here's the limit as x goes to negative infinity of x cubed minus 6x squared plus, well, you know what? It doesn't even matter. And here's why it doesn't matter what all this stuff is. Grain of sand, grain of sand, grain of sand. Even 6x squared is a grain of sand compared to the magnitude of infinity cubed that's expanding so much more rapidly than that 6x squared. Grain of sand, grain of sand, grain of sand. Everything over here is a grain of sand compared to the magnitude of this x cubed that is increasing so much more rapidly. And now we can reduce this down to the limit as x approaches negative infinity of Hey look, x cubed over x cubed, boom, boom, that cancels out. This is just some constant 1 over 5. And so this whole thing is just equal to 1 over 5. So here's something to remember. If you have a bigger exponent on top than on the bottom, this thing goes off to infinity. If you have the same exponent on top as you have on the bottom, just look at the coefficients in front of your leading term. The answer here is one-fifth. And surprisingly, take a look. Here, our bottom, our denominator, is expanding much, much faster than our numerator. We could use the grain of sand's approach, grain of sand, grain of sand. But of course, x over x squared once again reduces down to our second property, 1 over x and this goes to 0. So if your denominator has a bigger exponent the limit goes to 0.